new feature. We're going to go down to Ron Henthorne. He's got defensive coordinator Steve Hannon. Ron? Okay, I'm down here on the field with Steve Hannon. We're just looking at the background here. Looks like one of the band members got it, uh, injured in some manner. I'll check on that later. But Steve, uh, good defense the first half, kind of pitching a shutout there. Uh, Ain't changing anything up the second half here? Yeah, I mean, not defensively. Um, defensively, we're going to keep doing what we're doing. It seems to be working okay. We might start putting a little bit more pressure on, start bringing more guys. We haven't done that much, so that, that might be a little change. And we're going to go back to our first string defense is going to play. So that's a couple of minor, minor differences. Okay, so give some of the seniors a chance to sit back on the bench again? Yeah, the, you know, we started with the seniors, all the seniors that did, don't normally play or start, and then they got their chance to play a little bit. And, and uh, you know, if we can build up a little bit of a lead here, we'll get them, we'll get them back in. All right, that'll be a great strategy for second half. Let's see if we can put some points on the board. Yeah, that's up to Rory. <laughs> well, he's a big gambler right now, so we'll see what he does. All right, thanks, Ron. All right, thanks, Steve. Back to you guys. Thank you, Ron. Uh, just more stuff there for the Fred's Rivertown Alehouse halftime show, which is going to end right now. Scott Oshman along with Tim Boyle, and we're getting ready for second half action, except we've got a, a student, it looks like. We're not quite sure from the halftime. It's homecoming here for the Shorewood Thunderbirds, and oh. that's uh, not good to see, Tim Boyle. They just put, like, another three minutes on the board. We were down to zero, and uh, they've been working. I hope, I hope everything's okay. You normally don't see a band member injured during the halftime, but this field is like jinxed for every time we come it's here. It's crazy. And it looks like this is a serious injury. They've been working on this player for a long time, and I don't know what happened if they got got out of beat. I don't know. I mean, well, I, I, I don't know if it was a baton hitter or what happened or if it's a male or female. We can't quite tell. Ron Heinthorn's walking in there to try and hopefully she's okay. Back to this game momentarily, Tim Boyle, 3-0 at halftime. Credit again, Coach uh, Rowe giving the credit as well to this Thunderbird defense and this team. They're playing their hearts out, and you know what? They punched them in the mouth on the first half. No, I agree. Uh, it, just like last year, too. You know, last year, again, we've said it a couple times, that Glacier Peak was losing at home in this game against Shorewood, and it was senior night. And, it, you know, a lot, a lot of the, the problem is a lot of the sophomores and juniors are starters, and you put some seniors in that normally aren't starters, and it messes up the flow of the game. So all of a sudden the tempo's off, and, you know, the defense, of course, is doing great. But uh, there was a couple opportunities, I think, that they could have had some interceptions and things like that. So hard to say. It's hard to say what happened, and maybe they'll put all their regular starters back in get some points back on the board, then maybe go back to the seniors, some of the seniors. It uh, should be a different looking half from Glacier Peak side. Also want to give a shout out. We've got people from Arizona. And as you can't see just out of your screen now, both coaches were meeting with the referees tonight and uh, getting an update on that injury let's, because they, she is still down there. Let's go to Ron actually went in there to try to see what happened. Oh, Ron's talking to one of the coaches now, but uh, see if we can get Ron real quick. Ronnie, can you, Ron, can you hear us down there? Ron Henthorne checking on that injured band member. Yeah, I tried to uh, find out what's going on with the band member down here, but uh, they're being very secretive about uh, what's happening. So at this point, they haven't moved her yet, but she does look like she's in pain. Maybe I'll find out after they take her off the field. Well, obviously, thank you, Ron. Obviously, you want uh, you, they have to be very cautious in these situations. You don't want any information coming out. I think they're opening it up down there. If you look down at the end of the field, it looks like they just opened up the gates like they're going to bring in an ambulance. And I hope I'm not saying that prematurely, but they just had some people open up that big gate. Boy, uh, our thoughts, uh, they're getting the teams actually, they're taking the teams off the field again. This is obviously pretty serious. I mean, they. Well, our thoughts, uh, we don't know who that is. Our thoughts out with that young person. Uh, hopefully they're okay. Shannon, can you uh, go to that uh, fence where I was talking about where they opened it up? And we'll show you here. They opened up the fence there just a second ago like they need to let an ambulance in. And this would be the third time in a row an ambulance has had to come on the field when we built been at the stadium. Two, the other two were actually broken legs, so very serious injuries. And I, I really don't understand. They wouldn't say anything to Ron when he was down there. And 
it uh, it doesn't look good. The officials, Mike Carter, our referee, Mitch Winter, the umpire, Greg Long, the line judgment, judge, and... Uh, I think it's Kevin Corbin. The other line judge uh, talking to Coach Roy Rosenbaugh and also Rob Peschel again, Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle. It's still halftime here because of this situation at Shoreline Stadium, Glacier Peak 3-0 uh, lead. Ron has an update for us, Scott. Check in with Ron Henthorne. Yeah, actually, uh, nobody on the field would talk to me, but the cheerleaders who were out there on the field uh, just told me that they were doing a uh, routine where she was up on somebody's shoulders and slipped and fell down. She thinks they might have broke her arm. She was in shock for a little bit, so that's what they were concerned about. But I think they're taking all the precautions they can take, and uh, I hope the young lady is very well when she gets up and around. So it was a cheerleader. We weren't sure if it was okay. a band member. Thank you, Ron. Now this will. Oh, here, here's the ambulance. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, see if we can get the camera to go. The ambulance is actually coming up the street right now. Shannon Cuneo doing a phenomenal job on camera again. The STSPN crew so big we couldn't even fit in the press booth here at Shoreline Stadium. Chris Engelai Cuneo, the spotter. John McLean, our statistician, Tim Boyle, is not even in the booth. He's out of the booth, and he's still he's cranking freezing. out. He's still cranking the stats out. Oh, and here, here it comes. So, again, Scott, third time in a row we've had an ambulance on the field when we've been here, and it could be the third broken bone. Well, let's hope that she is okay. Again, everybody watching around the country around 8, uh, 17 p.m. Pacific Standard Time here, Shoreline Stadium, Glacier Peak, Shorewood Thunderbirds. And as Tim mentioned, for the third time, we've only been doing, you and I have been doing this broadcast. This is our third year for SDSPN. And each time we have come to this stadium, We've had this situation. I know, and it sounds like we got another broken bone. It's crazy. We're going to take a timeout while they tend to her. I'm going to show you the Seattle Hill Physical Therapy, a great commercial starring our own Mr. Tim Boyle as he breaks it down there at Seattle Hill Physical Therapy. We'll be back Hello, right everybody. after this. STSPN would like to welcome Seattle Hill Physical Therapy. We here at the Seattle Hill Physical Therapy enjoy and esteem athletes, especially uh, make the pain, we enjoy screening and get free screens. So Rick, you guys, is it fair to say you guys as a physical therapist, you're kind of like a detective. You kind of like break it down and figure out exactly what's wrong. Well, physical therapists are trained to kind of differentially diagnose that pain from leg pain utilize those clinical interpretations to properly treat the patient. We commonly get a response from people that say, hey, that's magic. And my, my favorite comment is, no, that's science. One of the things we have in the facility that we'd like to introduce you to our alter G treadmill, which is an anti-gravity treadmill. This anti-gravity treadmill is used to de increase the ability for someone to continue to train full stride, even overtrain in bounding the maneuvers to try to accelerate muscle motor control of, of a run, say for instance. And at the same time, we can lower the body reaction forces by lifting the person off of gravity. So here's our anti-gravity treadmill. Step, step down there first, and then, and then In this bladder, we have a very intelligent treadmill. So this treadmill is going to measure you three times. So just be heavy. Just let your feet just be on the treadmill. Okay. So normal normal running speed or normal walking speed is 2.5 miles an hour. So try to get that up to about 2.5. That'd be just a relatively normal walking speed. <laughs> Okay, it's going to be up to like 4.5, so that feels all right. Wow, you must feel much lighter than you should. That's I, great. The game mechanics, foot and ankle, hip and knee. You can really, I had an ankle injury, so this would have really helped out. This 
allows for the freedom of arm movement. It's highly specific, very easy to change that weight resistance. At what speed are you running at, Josh? Only seven miles an hour. It looks like a walk in the park. <laughs> yeah. So, Rick, what's the what's the strangest injury you've seen here? Is it like a, some kind of chest club, tennis, bowling? What's the strangest injury? For these wonderful roller derby girls. Roller derby, there we go. <laughs> who can't seem to avoid contact in their sport. It's just the most amazing thing. It's a, it's a real deal. And those girls, those gals, and those guys, when they get together, something gives. And what gives, well, is what we see. Those are some tough guys. Don't want to mess with them. It's a real deal. They're a real deal. They're real. They're great athletes. And really strong and highly motivated. They get better really fast. And that's fun to work. You might have to cover a little. So, Rick, how would you recommend an athlete come to get, to get to where you are in the current healthcare environment today. The current healthcare environment is changing fast and one of the things that we, have, we are seeing is that the insurance companies are really mandating lots of levels of oversight, unfortunately. So a lot of, a lot of physicians that we work with are highly skilled in identifying the severity of your injury. And what physical therapists are very good at, and San Diego Physical Therapy is also extremely good at, is helping to decipher severity of your injury and appropriate treatments. Most of the time what we do is make people work to get better. It's a really exciting thing for a lot of athletes that they have to work to get better, not rest, but work and learn how to work there. Very good. Well, Rick, thank you very much for talking to us. My Back here on STSPN, Scott Oshman along with Tim Boyle. We are still at halftime. Glacier Peak with a 3 nothing lead over Shorewood Thunderbirds here. We had a, uh, again, we're just still mesmerized and blown away. I guess it's a full, full moon tonight, Tim Boyle, but an uh, injury that is delaying the halftime here, as you see in your screen. A young gal, apparently uh, one of the cheerleaders on the Shorewood team, uh, came off a... Uh, a move, a maneuver, and uh, is down. And so precautionary, they're bringing out the ambulance, and that's where we're at. We're at a delayed halftime. Well, in their, this game, I was going to make a comment that this game was going really fast because I think the first half went by in like an hour. And then, of course, uh, unfortunately, we got an injury, and it's uh, the, every time we come here, you know, it's like an extra... Uh, extra half hour or so when you get the ambulance and yeah obviously we don't care about we you know we no, care we about the player sure, on the field yeah. or the person on the field but want to uh again we're from texas tim boyle on our facebook page stspn uh the elledges uh genie elledge checking oh. in saying they're having some issues on there maybe they're on, on sound but uh we'll check that oh here. we did have some Did-y. sound issues well i think we should be good here but while they're tending to them we're going to go to a very controversial play that what's gotten like 1,200 hits on YouTube and Facebook, and it's Kainoa Wong's excellent run by a no-call horse collar. And uh, take it away, if Leslie. If you didn't see this, it's unbelievable. Here, it's going to come in take just it away. a second. away, 153 here, here left go. in this one. Fourth and five, the pitch to Wong. Wong has the first down and a few more. Spins out of a tackle, still on his feet. Now Look going at that. horizontal. Now vertical. Look at that. Wong to the 40. Finally. Oh, oh he's horse, horse collared. Throw it. You got to throw a flag. That was clear as day. You got to throw a flag on that. AJ And North. he's hurt, too. That horse collar was clear as day. I've never seen a horse collar so clear as that. Oh, There's finally. The like two minutes later, they throw the flag. And Kainoa's hurt, I think. Kainoa's trying to be stretched out by Branson Jeez. Corwin. And I'll tell you what, Coach K down there, that is, it's going against Coach K, who is absolutely furious. You can see Coach Rory Rosenbaum And that was against, I cannot believe they don't call a horse caller on that. 
That was the most blatant horse collar I've ever seen in my life, and they don't call it. And there was two refs right there. Unbelievable. I don't know what to tell uh, you. It was as blatant as the, the day is long right in front of you. Let's just hope Kainoa is okay. And I tell you what, that just gave Kainoa player of the game for me. Nobody was nobody was making a, a run at it, and uh, I'm giving it to Kainoa just for that run right there. And he had a couple other big runs. Kainoa too. has been huge. Seven carries, 32 yards. Uh, well, he must be more than that. Yeah, more that than that. that was like 30-something right there. They haven't added that one up yet. <laughs> the penalty's un unsportsmanship on the coach, I believe. week's game at Snohomish Veterans Memorial Stadium, the, the Bothell game, excuse me, I almost fell down here, I almost had an injury in the booth. <laughs> Did you see a booth injury? Criminy. Uh, you know, I just can't get enough of that horse collar. No, you, I, it's like, yeah. You know what it reminds cow me of? I gotta get more cow It reminds me of the, that Sean Elledge miracle reception that uh, we didn't get a call on. and we kept, right. And that got a lot of hits and we put, put that on the screen and, uh, We've had a lot of plays like that. We have. That was an unbelievable. Again, what a great run by Kainoa Wong. I mean, he went left to right, south to north. He was all over. He used every blade of turf he could, just like Sean Elledge last year. But it is just we were talking to the coaches before the game, Tim and I. Uh, it's just unbelievable that the ref was right there. He was in great well, position. <laughs> He's going to have some explaining to do because I think the video went into the league. Lucy! <laughs> yeah. Lucy, you got some explaining to do. Well, he does, actually, because especially with him right there, just right on it, he, you couldn't see it any more clear. And we're, you know, we're up in the Texas Book Depository, <laughs> and we saw it like clear as day. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. We're at halftime here at Shoreline Stadium. Again, you're seeing, uh, unfortunately, this this young person uh, getting tended to on the cheerleading. It's homecoming here at the halftime. Very good band, actually. Yeah, it was a good halftime show. It was homecoming. You saw the homecoming court. Oh, so, good call. Leslie McLean just pointed out that we need to talk about the upcoming game. So that's a great – well, first of all, we got to win this one yeah, first. first of all, Glacier Peak just a 3-0 lead at halftime here. Tim. But hypothetically, yep. if they do pull this out, you know, they got a three-point cushion right now, it's going to come down to all the marbles next week against Meadowdale. Now, huge game. we've got them at home, which I think we've had them on the road the like two years – I think we've had them on the road two years in a row, if I'm not mistaken. I, yeah. It was yeah. like, uh, yeah, we, I felt like every year we were playing them. Yeah, I think three out of the last four years we've had them on the road. and uh, But at any rate, that's going to come down to – that's going to come down to the league championship if they pull this game out, which they should pull this out. I think that – I don't think they're playing all their starters. They're mixing in seniors, and they're just not quite finding the tempo. Fortunately for Glacier Peak – Shorewood isn't really doing anything offensively. Right. So well, I think they got I think they have the cheerleader off of the field now, so this might clear up here in just a minute and obviously our thoughts and prayers go out to her and her family. Yes. And she's getting now getting some uh crowd clapping as they should. Hopefully she's okay. Interestingly enough, Scott, I heard a stat that cheerleading is like the most there's more injuries in cheerleading than there are in any other sport really yes absolutely and it makes i mean they do a lot of this crazy stuff and they're always doing back flips and back handsprings and pyramids and i don't know what else i don't know the moves in cheerleading <laughs> if it was wrestling i, I could tell say, you but <laughs> if it was wrestling well, i don't know what the, the wrestling definition i know like the, the pyramid and the uh What's the move that uh, Rodney Dangerfield did off the diving board? Uh, oh, what are you <laughs> the triple, Rodney? the triple Lindsay, oh, or, <laughs> triple, triple Lindy. Lindy. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah, right here. Here's what I'm gonna do it for you. All right, hey, no respect, you know what I'm saying? All right, hey, Tim Boyle, everybody. Right. <laughs> that was Scott Osher, ladies and gentlemen, oh, yeah, with the triple Rodney. Lindy. 
Rodney came back. Some scores coming in. Halftime, Stanwood 14, Lake Stevens 14. Ooh, Lake Stevens. They're struggling with Stanwood. Wow. Well, we thought that could be an interesting game. Also an interesting game before uh, the, the, this game started. You see the uh, ambulance coming off the field here. Uh, Keon Coleman doing the work for Cascade. Uh, four carries, 78 yards, a two-yard touchdown run. Cascade 17, Jackson 0. Whoa, and that's my good buddy that coaches over there. I'm happy to hear that. Jackson having a roller coaster year. Came in with huge anticipation that they were going to just absolutely steamroll well, 4A. And let me tell you, what a one guy can do. They got this great quarterback that came in this year from Florida, and he's really changed the team around, basically. And they uh, they kind of took all the Lake Stevens coaches two years ago, and uh, we're getting word now it's a broken arm, uh, possible broken arm. We don't want to. That's. I actually think that's good. The way they were leaving on the, you know, leaving her on the field. I was hoping it wasn't like a neck or back injury. So probably a positive thing that it's an arm. We'll, we'll check uh, that one out again. End of first quarter. This one uh, probably a little dated and we're going to get going here. The, you see the Glacier Peak uh, Grizzlies coming back on the field. Bearsville Pilchuck, the Tomahawks uh, up 42-0 on Everett. That's not even fair. No. We knew, uh, what quarter was that? Uh, I think that was end of the first. <laughs> 42 Jeez. to nothing in the first. Uh, I don't know what the under over was, but. 42. Probably, yeah. So try and get, if you have scores, uh, you can get them on FTSPN.com and our Facebook if you have any scores out there. But Scotty Newsom's dad, Scott, is watching from Austin, Texas, and the grandparents, Sarah Catherine Newsom. Hello to you down in Tejas. Where? Uh, Texas, Austin, oh. Texas. They know football down in Texas. Boy, they do know football. High school football is huge down there. Dad, what do they go to? They go to like 10A, 7A? I, I don't know, but they'll put like 10,000 people in, a sta in the stands for high school football down there. They're building, uh, we saw some stadium renderings of a, a gorgeous new stadium down uh, near the Houston area, I believe. As uh, you see the green jerseys, uh, yeah, you're looking at the Glacier Peak side, but now Shorewood come out. That was quite a delay, Tim, God, Cole, that for was, halftime. Was that about a 45-minute half or maybe more than that? 8.35. And by the way, just uh, want to give a shout out to our friends down at Fred's watching the game and uh, apologize to everybody for the delay. Now, I wish we had a webcam in and we could see because I want to hold up who's having the Asian nachos. Oh, there's, there's got to be a bunch of them down there. <laughs> but speaking of food, Eagle Eye, Chris Cuneo, Shan Co Shannon Cuneo, Mongo's, eat at mongos.com. I'm telling you, today, and what one of the things they're featuring this week is Sean's sweet barbecue sandwich i'm telling you sean sweet barbecue it is to die for who is sean sean is the the right hand of, of chris cuneo he's another chef one of the great chefs there at mongo's in clearview and i'm telling you i say this every week and it's three years but if you have not been there I, I don't know what's wrong, seriously. If you come in town, if you're from out of town, it, it's, it's, you should go there right away. Mongo's at Clearview. They're open, uh, closed on Mondays, but Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, open till 8 p.m. Mongo's, and it is phenomenal food. Just do it. Just get there. Mongo's, we love them, and we had some sweet, Sean's Sweet Barbecue wraps tonight for our pregame. Oh, it looks like we got uh, 30 seconds before they're going to start here. Let's go over the stats here real quick. We'll get you guys back up to speed. 3 nothing Glacier Peak. Uh, boy, they were knocking on the door there in the red zone a few times. Couldn't get in. Great job by the Thunderbird defense. Statistically at halftime, nothing really uh, nothing really crazy sticking out to you. No, so. it not at all. I mean, Kainoa had a couple good runs. Austin Hines had a couple passes, good passes. Branson Corwin's looking pretty sharp tonight, better than he has before. He's had a couple little miscues with the ball behind the center, but uh, his 
he's had some good passes that are right on the mark. Yeah, six for nine in the first half, 82 yards, uh, 20 his longest, too. I believe that might have been Austin Hines. And he had a couple portray uh, as a tough. He kind of was turning around wide open, could have had more. Oh, we got, just got an update from uh, my friend Rob Nichols. The writer. Sultan 14, Archbishop Murphy 7 with 8.56 left in the third. Archbishop uh, struggling a little bit this year. A, didn't they get a win last week? I think they did get a win, but uh, not quite having the year that they're notorious for. Kind of back uh, in the rebuilding phase, maybe you could uh, yeah, say. I, that's fair. We're getting ready for kickoff. Glacier Peak uh, receiving the first half, so Shorewood will start the second half with the ball, a chance to go down or lead over the touchdown or maybe get a field goal. Back to receive for Shorewood as Spencer, the weapon Pettit, kicks oh, it. Oh, and it's an onside kick, and he and got, got it. it. Guppy got it. I think they're going to. It went. I think it went the 10 yards. There's a flag on the far side, Oh, Jim. man. Is there? Boy. Oh, and Guffey came up with a great play on that onside kick. And it looked from here, and we're right on it from here, Scott. It looked like it went exactly 10 yards. He caught it, at, I believe, at the 51-yard line. Yeah, I mean, line. let's Excuse see what me. they're going to call. I mean, that looked perfect. And you had, and you can see, uh, you're, he's talking to the referee. And we'll see what the call. Ron Henthorne, what did you see? I saw the same thing you saw. I saw Guffey run under there and catch it, but it looks like they're going to uh, penalize him for something because he backed it up five yards, and he's going to kick it again, guys. It, well, it, it was a, it, I think it's an offsides, and that's why they, they backed it up five yards or some type of play like that. Now he's going to have to kick it away. Now Spencer just drills it. He's going to take it at the four. And he's hit hard, still on his feet, though, breaking outside the 20-yard line. Man, he's tough to bring down. Who is that number 28 That's Andrew character? Garrison, a 5'8", 160, a senior. Man, they got a lot of players that are like 5'8", 165. <laughs> they got their whole team is 5'8", 165. That must be their recruiting mantra. It's like the star-bellied sneeches and the what? plain bellied sneeches. What? They're all the same out there. <laughs> what, what is going on? Don't you remember that? No, the you Dr. lost Doctor Seuss that classic there. Oh, Come gosh. on. We didn't have him in Iowa. He didn't make it there. Oh, Tim Boyle. Just started the second half. Three nothing. First and ten. Angelos Pere gets the ball maybe back to the line of scrimmage. They'll start from their 23, and that's where they'll be at second and 10. Again, Corwin, first half, will be interesting to see who he starts with in the second half for Glacier Peak, six for nine, 82. Brady Southern couldn't quite get the handle, three for six, and we got another Jeez. injury. I'm and telling this time, you, this field is cursed. And poor Rob Peschel, the head coach there in the black, heading out. And we'll have to see. I can't get a number down there. My goodness. We're going to have to apologize to our East Coast viewers. It's oh. going to be like 3 in the morning before this <laughs> yeah. game gets done on the East Coast. Yeah, North Carolina, even Texas is. Uh, yeah, Texas is two hours ahead. Boy, and it's a crisp, clear Northwest October evening, just dipping under 50 degrees outside. No chance of any type of precipitation. 841 now. As this one is going long, good chance to tell you about Fred's Rivertown Ale House. Again, shout out to them. But WescoAthletics.com, any type of Wesco, 4A, 3A, any sport, Tim Boyle, volleyball is going on right now. we got all kinds of sports. You can check it out, WescoAthletics.com. Get the game day app available on iPhone, Android, anything you have. So WescoAthletics.com. Also, want to tell you about Kathy Salvatolina. We're getting the second half here in the post game, and our player of the game is the Kathy Salvatolina 
Windermere Real Estate Broker, player of the game and post game, KathySalvo.com. Well, nobody's making a run at it right now, I'll tell you that. Yeah, well, it's uh, plenty of time to climb the leader bag, leaderboard. Seattle Physical Hill Therapy, Sport and Spine Physical Therapy. They're our score sponsor, and right now it's Glacier Peak 3 on a 34 yard field goal by Spencer, the weapon Pettit, and that's all the scoring we have. Second and 10 from their 23. Okamura hands it off now to number two, Riccio Campbell. And he'll gain maybe one. If that. Well, the problem is, is uh, all these injuries. Again, we talked about it. Shorewood can't afford to lose anybody to injury. You know, when you got, and part of the reason, Scott, is they got all their athletes have to go both ways. So they're in on every play. So. Obviously, it increases your chance of injury for your athletes. and We're seeing that more and more, even the last couple of years, where teams that have depth, the bigger programs, they don't want their kids going both ways if possible. It's very taxing. Third and nine. Okamura flush to the right, passes, gets it to Testerman on. It's a first down for the Thunderbirds at the 35. Boy, number 18, Cameron Testerman having a big night. Yeah. Great little throw on the run, well executed play, picks up the first down. Had a big reception, that was Trey Chambers there for the tackle, just speaking of going both ways on offense, defense. Boy, Cameron Testerman, another big catch. He had that big catch for 28 yards in the first half. And new life, first and 10 now from their own 36. Trips left. Going back to the air, overthrown, trying to go to Angelo. Oh, Perez. there's a flag back there. And that, that may be a late hit on the quarterback. Maybe on number 13. Let's see what they say. Rob Peschel looking to, as we see. I don't know. Uh, I think that's a late hit. Mitch Winter, the umpire. Mike Carter, the referee. Greg Long. Our line judge. Looks like it's oh, it's obviously going against Glacier Peak. I think that's a roughing the passer is what that is. Yeah. Well, Jeez. I think it was on 13. That's the only guy I saw back there. Yes, it, uh, Ron confirming on the sideline, Ron Hunthorne, that it was roughing the passer. And I think the only penalties tonight have gone on Glacier Peak. Yeah, and have we We'll had have to one? ask our statistician, John McLean. I don't think there's been any penalties on Shorewood that I know of. You're reading my mind. Yes, four for 64 yards so far. That was in, just in the first half. And I'd add 15 more to, yards to that one. So Another run up the middle, but nothing but Grizzly White jerseys. And he's going to throw another throw it again. Play. Scotty Newsome. Okay, Newsom. come on, Scotty. What are you doing? His dad watching in Austin, Texas, along with Man. McCoy. Okay, that's two personal fouls back to back. So there's that's another, a, that's 15, right? That's another 15 yard penalty. So all the penalties going against Glacier Peak. And that's a way, you know, that's just gonna let them march right down the field doing that. Almost a hundred yards now in penalties for Glacier Peak. And yeah, you know, I, you know, I hate to get on these, you know, these are kids, you know, they're high school kids, they make mistakes, but those are just mistakes. Uh, those are just mental errors right there. You get a roughing the passer and then an unsportsmanship penalty. They got to they gotta reel it in and that sends, they're already down to like the 33 yard line of Glacier Peak from these penalties. Yeah. Oh, interesting game, 9.58. We're still just the start, had a big delay for an injured cheerleader, but first and 10 now at the Glacier Peak 33. Aaron Okamura, Angelos pitches a quick pitch with Coleman in his grill. Now Perry makes a move, spins forward and gets all the way Josh down to the 25. Josh Elvig on the tackle. Big Josh Elvig came, I think, all the way from the other side of the field to make that play. So he just came in. They just put him in now. He's got to make some plays here. You see uh, Kopek, Reed Kopek for the Thunderbirds limping back to the huddle. Always want to tell you about McDaniels. Do it. Best center in downtown Snohomish, Tim. 
Great place to get your hardware. No, love that place. Take care of you right when you enter the door. Second and two now for Aaron Okamura. And the Thunderbirds driving. Looking to the sideline, now calling an audible. Perry on the near side along with Another Trumpet. flag, that should be, that should be on uh, Shorewood. Finally, they're gonna get a penalty. It's like a elite, what is it gonna be? Delay a game, I think is what that is. Repeat second down. They the were at first second and two. Penalty of the night against Shorewood and Glacier Peaks approaching 100 yards in penalties, if I'm not mistaken. You are never be, mistaken, my I friend. I think it'd be like 94 yards in penalties. That is correct. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, that Cougar math, it's just that Washington <laughs> State Cougar math just never ceases to amaze me. Believe me, everybody, there's no calculator anywhere near him. Second and seven now, rolling to his right is Okamura. Now he's got plenty of time and distance to get to the first down we'll see if they give him forward progress he i think was they're going to give it to him i think he was right at the sticks there and i think they're going to he's going to get it mccoy and ian black to take him to drive him back but Ooh, it looks... it's close it's right on the oh the, the the white hat just signaled first down he just eyeballed it Mitch Winter, the umpire. Mike Carter, the referee tonight. 8.41 left. Nobody saw this coming here. The second half, a three-point lead by the Grizzlies. And... Looks Glacier like they took Peak. a timeout. Yes, yeah, Steve Hannon, the defensive corner, takes a timeout. Right. He wants to talk about it. Not happy about this situation. We'll step away for a second. You're watching Glacier Peak Football on the Snohomish Times Sports Network. Scott Oshman, Tim Boyle here. Timeout, first one taken in the second half. Glacier Peak, first and 10 at the Glacier Peak 23. Shorewood Thunderbirds, hard pass. Oh, it's complete by Angelos Pere. Boy, be... Brandon Jensen was in his grill. Got it off just in time and uh, gonna be about two yards short of the first down on that. But again, they're, they are marching down the field on him. That's gonna bring it down to about the 16 yard line. So they're in the red zone. And they're threatening to take the lead on Glacier Peak. A delay a game penalty, just made that up. But back again at second and two to go. Motion. Okamura, now he gets it to Angela Perry. He's nailed by Peterson. Oh, he is hit hard. That was a great play. The defense is getting a little stingy there. Ian Black to finish it off. They're uh, tight. You got to tighten up here in this red zone. And, you know, obviously they don't, there's no such thing as a line on high school football, Scott. But if there was a line, this would have been like a 30 point spread for Glacier Peak. And they are just not getting it done tonight. Shorewood coming in two and four with a big win last week over Shorecrest. Third down and two at the 16 of Glacier Peak. Fakes the hand up. Now Okamura in trouble. McCoy chasing. He just tosses it, throws it away wisely. He was about to be sacked. It'll bring up fourth down from the 16. Smart play there by the quarterback, and I think they're going to have to. I'm just wondering if they have a kicking game, so we're going to have to see what they do, if they actually go for, like, a fake or or what, because I think that first one, that might have been a planned fake. So let's just see what they do here. See if Is there uh, a flag? Jacobs okay. comes out. Is there a flag on I'm the I'm not sure, Spencer Jacobs, but 
Warren show the hold. Only four, well, they're, let's see if they're actually gonna go for a field goal here. This is Isaac Whitaker. Oh, and court. it's blocked! And that was Wong! I know a Wong gets the block. Hines there, and what a big time. That is the second time this season, a dramatic block by this Glacier Peak yeah, defense. Yeah, Guffey had one earlier in the year, and Kainoa just laid himself out on that was textbook. That's like you'd see in the NFL. Comes out on the right side, just lays himself out, gets it at the last second, and that's why we. That's why he's been player of the game a couple times. That boy wants another T-shirt. He's after. How many T-shirts does the kid need? Kathy Salvadolina, player of the game, Kainoa Wong, two already this season. First and 10 on the Glacier Peak 29. Branson Corwin back in at quarterback, hands off to Pinka, nope. maybe one. And uh, I gotta tell you, Shorewood did a great job. They chewed up about seven or five, five minutes a clock there. And that's what you need to do to Glacier Peak is when you're on offense, you need to establish those like five minute drives. That's what will actually win you the game against a team like Glacier Peak. Play ugly and you got a chance. But Hines you got a motion. score. Fakes it. No, he does give it to Pinka. Pinka spins out of tackles and gets up the up to the 42 yard line. They'll mark him there. Nice run by senior Josh Pinka. That looked like an Earl Campbell run. He just kind of rolling and bowling and knocking people over. Stayed low, went north and south. Pinka having a nice night so far, and he gets the ball one more time, crosses the 45. And she picks up about four or five yards on that little run up the middle. 6.14 left to go in the third quarter. If you just joined us, it was an interesting first half. We had a delayed halftime, hopefully that Young person is okay. The cheerleader had to get an ambulance out here. Shorewood goes, drives down, tries a field goal. It's blocked by Kainoa Wong, and now Glacier Peak driving. Second and six from their own 46. High snap. Branson, though, brings it down, has time. Now he's being chased, going backwards. Oh, a nice, nice block. block by Pinka. And Corwin crosses the 50, and he made absolutely nothing out of something. Well, something out of nothing. And I, I'll tell you what, Josh Pinka laid a perfect block back there to give Corwin that run. So it is a first down. Great run by Corwin. And he probably ran like 30 <laughs> yards on that play. He'll only get credit for less than 30, but he did. He went a long ways around. He took the long route. He took the scenic route. Pinka in the first half, eight carries for 35 yards. We'll check with John McLean, our statistician, see how he's doing. First and 10 now on the Thunderbirds 46. Pinka right up the gut. Nice job, carries Testerman for one or two and he'll get to the 40. That's a good six maybe, yeah, they're gonna give him maybe six on that one, I think. Josh Pink is starting to get going here. Another six for number five, the senior Josh Pinka. And you got big Nick Allen on the near side against Cho. That is definitely a size matchup. Branson back to pass. Now he's got and trouble. Gonna... He's going down the field for Trey. It's caught at the two. Trey Chambers hauls it in with Angelo Pere right at his grill. The thief finally getting out of the house with some goods. Great throw and great catch. Now here's where they need to execute, Scott, because they've been here all night tonight. You know, it's first and goal on the three-yard line. This is where they gotta they gotta find out uh, find out what they're made of here. Nolan Dale with a good snap. They fake it to Pinka, and Corwin is in for a Glacier Peak touchdown with 4:51 left in the third. First time tonight they reach the Smurf turf end zone. Yeah, and that's a great little quarterback keeper there. Nice, you know, Corwin does run the ball really well. He can run that, they run that play really well. Now they got uh, the weapon in for the extra point, Scott. And you know what, Corwin, you know, he's a small kid, tough as nails. Sometimes that's to his advantage. Oh yeah, he's, I mean, he's very slippery, but you, you know, you said it earlier, he sees the field really well. He sees those holes. 
He does a great job again. If he can get low, he had Pinka coming. He holds it in there, and then he takes it out as he sees it. Oh. And now they change. Oh, I know exactly the play they're running. They're gonna, they're gonna throw it to a receiver back here on. Oh, they're yeah. gonna. He's gonna. Oh, look at that! Wow! And it's caught. And guess who there? His backup, Brady Southern, with the. Two-point conversion. And did the weapon throw the ball? That is That's why they call him the weapon. <laughs> you thought his leg was a weapon. Wow. More than one weapon. There he is, Spencer Pettit. You understand the Everett Herald was at practice yesterday getting some comments and in an interview for Spencer. That's right. That's gonna get him that that's gonna get him into those division one schools. He he's a double a dual threat. And we're looking down. I can see him uh, right below the press box here. His dad, Steve Pettit, and all his mom, Kim Pettit. Great job. And also, we always see uh, Brady Southern's parents, and that's uh, yep. kind of a kick. I thought they were going to do the screen to Leon Elliott on the near side. I, just as you yeah, it. they've done that two or three times this year, and that's what I thought they were going to do. And then uh, Pettit comes up with a nice little. That was a that faked me out. It did. Me too. But nonetheless, our Seattle Hill Sport and Spine Physical Therapy score with 4.48 left to go in the third quarter. Glacier Peak now 11, Sherwood 0. And the Pettit weapon out once again now with his leg. Back to receive. Whoa. But and he boy. sticks that eight yards deep in the end zone. You think Spencer was a little jacked up after oh, the touchdown yeah. toss? Apparently the cold air isn't making a difference on that ball. Shorewood to start at the 20-yard line. Huge momentum shift there, Tim Boyle, for yeah. Glacier Peak, that's nailing what, it. That's what Glacier Peak needs. They need to get some points up on the board here. That gives them a little cushion. Good news for Glacier Peak is their defense is really not allowing anything out of, sh well, I take that back. Shorewood kind of marched it up the field a couple times, but they're uh, holding them when they need to. Branson Corwin, seven for 10. As Okamura with McCoy chasing goes long, almost intercepted by Hines. It looked like it went right through his hands, didn't it? Don't know, he was going for Boston Vordal, number seven. And Aaron Okamura's got a nice little arm. He's can, he can launch it down He can actually throw on the run too, which is not easy to do for a high school athlete. There's, you know, usually quarterbacks struggle with that. Second and 10 again from their 20, 443 left. Glacier Peak just scoring their first touchdown of the night. They convert the two point conversion. Testerman in motion now for Okamura. Thinks about shoveling a pass. Now he's got Elvig and everybody back there frustrated Okamura. He's going to lose a few on that one. And good move on the Glacier Peak defense to not tackle him after the whistle blew because a lot of times you'll see him run him back about five yards, then tackle him. And they got in trouble for that earlier. They are winning, uh, they're, excuse me, they're losing the penalty battle so far, and that has killed them. Big Josh Elvig there, Berg, Ian Black, and you heard, uh, if you didn't hear, right uh, before the second half, Ron Hunter and heard from defensive coordinator Steve Hannon, they were going to put some more pressure on the Thunderbirds here in the second half. Third and 16, empty set now. They bring the house. Okamura gets it off, it's incomplete. Again, the intended receiver was Vordahl. The hitman Guffey on the uh, coverage there. Oh, and there's a flag again. Is that going to be another, is that another roughing the passer? Let's check in with Ron Henthorn. Right. Ron, what'd you I see? I didn't actually see what happened on that, but it looked like it was going to go against Charwood for holding. I think they might decline that and make it fourth down. Did you get that? Yep, thank yep. you, Ron. Great. Great job by Ron Henthorne all season long. Nobody else has live streaming sports coverage with on the the moment, the sideline reporter there, Ron Henthorne, the wedge. Ron the wedge Henthorne. Come on, Boyle. The wedge. Come on. I like it. The wedge. 
There's no conversation that Ronnie won't get in there. And oh, and it's blocked. blocked! Was that Elvig that no, blocked that? No, that was Mosese Fafina. It's caught in the air by a Thunderbird tester. Uh, yeah, Testerman catches it at the 25. But it's I, a blocked punt. Now the referee is everybody conversing for a conversation, Tim. Well, it wouldn't have mattered if because I think Shorewood's thinking, oh, he caught it. That's going to be a first down. But he's still behind the line of scrimmage by five or six, seven yards at least. So are behind the first down marker. First down. Less They're actually going to give what Are in the world? Are you kidding me? They're going to give that to Shorewood? Leslie McLean running the board tonight, doing a phenomenal job. How is po that possible that it's? And Glenn, they're, Glenn they're gonna talk. Edge coach, head that, coach that's Roy. not the right call. No, they got to confirm. They'd that. have to get it. They'd have to recover that ahead of the first down marker. The head, the first down being on the 30. I yeah, think. so they're not even close. That's not the right call. I understand what they're saying. I think it, it the feet, the. The kick got blocked, and then he caught it in the air. And but dropped And then dropped it. So you're saying, uh, oh. Leslie McLean saying a Glacier Peak player caught, touched the ball. You're seeing oh. Coach Rowe getting a clarification by Mike Carter, the referee. Oh, I think a Glacier Peak guy caught it. I thought it was a Shore, Shorewood guy that caught it. No, it just Let's go down to Ron Hanthorne, Ron. Yeah, that was a blocked punt by Glacier Peak and it recovered by Shorewood, so it's just, uh, they say it's a first down at the point of recovery, even though it didn't cross the original line of scrimmage. Okamura back to pass, thank you, Ron. It's caught by Angelo, nice job to catch it in major traffic. He'll only get three or four Holloman there to catch up, and also Brendan Jensen. And Ian Black, or is it Lane Black? That's Ian Black. Ian Black. He, I, he actually almost had that uh, picked off or batted down, but uh, good move by the receiver to just go after it. So they stopped him, fake or blocked the punt. Now second and eight from their own 28-yard line. Aaron Okamura, wide open Thunderbird catches it at the 37 and gets to the 39. And that's Reed Kopik. Zach Peterson on the coverage, wide open was Kopik. Yeah, Zach Peterson laid a pretty good hit on him too, but Glacier Peak's gonna need to tighten it up here a little bit. The breaks seem to be, the Shorewood's getting a lot of breaks tonight. Well, that's what you need. Play ugly, get some breaks. Yep. And you can, uh, anything can happen. Yeah, 243 left in the third, Tim. Definitely, they're still in this game at 11 to nothing. Their own 40, first and 10. Perry in the background. Boy, he takes on Holloman and loses. Oh! And, and Jake Berg wishes he had that one back. He was going for Testerman, and it was right in and out of the bread basket. Yeah, hit him right Jake in the Berg. helmet or right in the, did it hit his face mask? I when, think he was surprised to see it. I think he was doing it. You couldn't have asked for a easier pick there. We've been complimenting young Aaron Okamura for his passing efficiency in that time. It was higher than he had wanted. Well, the legendary coach Don Shula always used to say, if they would have had better hands, they'd be receivers. Getting uh, Wendy Gregor Troost coming in on Facebook, letting us know that number 50 touched it. When Shorewood recovered on that blocked punt. Okamura, trouble with Jensen, and he's gonna go down, and it's big Josh Elvig, number 5'9", makes it happen. Yeah, that, and he's been in on a couple big plays tonight, so good to see Josh getting back in the swing of things tonight. Wow, what a big, big sack for Josh Elvig, the senior. Third and 16 now from their own 34. And Josh definitely has some explosive moments on that line. 156 left to go here in the third quarter. Glacier Peak struggling tonight on the road against a very determined Shorewood team. 
Okamura back to pass, now has time over the middle of the test room, and it's caught, but it is dropped, and Austin Hines what played an absolute stick. He actually had it in his hands, and Austin Hines hit him just at the right time and knocked the ball loose, so great play by Austin Hines. Boy, he shook the cookie jar, and I'm telling you what, it fell out. Unbelievable hit by Austin Hines. Again, debate in the booth at halftime whether Austin came down with that ball at the end zone in the first half. As you see a punt, this one gets away now. And oh, it's a flag. Guffey, fair catch. That's usually nine times out of ten, that's going to be an illegal block in the back on the receiving team. So we'll see what happens here. Fourth, it was fourth and 16, so probably no worries there. No, it'll be it'll be after the catch. Let's see what they say here. Boy, the referees having a workout now here, especially in the second half. They're getting to know Coach Rowe, though. <laughs> Without a doubt. <laughs> Wait for the call here, but I think that's going to go against Glacier Peak. Let's see what they say. They're, are they going? They're still talking. Where are they? Don't talk about it. Just call the play. Where's the flag now? Not sure where the flag is. If there was a flag, Tim, they now it's either they called it Did off. Did they wave that flag off? They waved something off. Branson Corwin at quarterback now. Josh Pinkett in the background. Uh -oh. That's it. Oh, fumbled snap. Now it's down, and guess what? The guys in green, Sharward has it. First and 10 at the Glacier Peak 18. A turnover. Costly, costly moment for the Grizzlies. And kind of the theme for this year, that exchange between the quarterback and the and the center there, it's just not quite working out this year for him. And boy, I'll tell you what, I said it just a couple minutes ago, all the breaks are going to Shorewood today. They've, they've had plenty of opportunities to score on Glacier Peak, but luckily uh, Glacier Peak's defense has been able to come through. Nolan Dale, the senior center. The snapper been doing a great job again Branson Corwin, he's wearing a glove tonight. He had uh, limited issues. But Aaron Okamura, now he's getting heat pressure. The thief, oh, it was oh. tipped off the thief. But Testerman got it on the rebound, and it fell to the ground. And I think it actually hit off his foot, too, and came back up, and he had another chance to get it. Oh, no, another flag. See what this one, I didn't see what... It looks like this is going to go against Glacier Peak, but. Boy, it has been an absolute flag fest once again. It's here. roughing the passer again on Glacier Peak. Another personal foul. Jeez, and they're, the flags are just ridiculous tonight. I can't believe some of these bonehead moves. That's going to bring it all the way down to about the nine yard line. So. First and goal from the nine is what that's going to make it. And Glacier Peak just keeps giving them chances with these penalties and don't understand it. The red zone, the red zone. It's been a game of execution here down inside the 20. And that's going to be an offsides on. That might be a false start. I think that's going to go against Shorewood. Trey Chambers clapping. Again, another meeting in the middle by this officiating crew. Good chance to tell you. False start. Well, that's going to bring him back five yards. So a little bit of a break there for Glacier Peak. Our Seattle Hill Sport and Spine Physical Therapy with 124 left to go in the third quarter. Glacier Peak 11, Shorewood nothing, but they are driving and knocking on the door once again. Just got a score in, 21-10 Sultan over Archbishop Murphy with about five minutes left in the fourth quarter. Ooh. We'll see, uh, watch that one unfold. Now first and goal from the 14. Empty set for Okamori, flushed right. Going for the end zone, 
overthrown incomplete. Probably a good thing that was overthrown just slightly because Austin Hines was right there and Trey Chambers was right there. Could have been easily picked off. And I, we got a timeout on the field or no, that's just the ball boy coming out there. You might see fog on your screen, but. It is, is that what it is? I was think it's from the players is what. You're thinking that's from the players? Eagle Eye Chris Cuneo, he's, he's. You're thinking that's just steam coming off the players? Okay. There doesn't seem to be any fog, really, I guess up in the lights, maybe, but second and goal from the 14. They were going on the last play for Zane Hoppin, hoping, and we want to talk about him. Now he goes back, Guffey, Did but he, he catch catches it. Ball? Angelo Perry. Great catch at the 11-yard line. Well, that gets him back to the original line of scrimmage, approximately. Third and goal now. Third and goal from the 14. Boy, this is uh, starts and finishes here. But number 11, look for Zane Hoppin, the 6'4 senior on the far side of the field with Angelo Perry in the backfield. Okamura. He's going across no. again, too high. Incomplete bring up fourth down intended for Testament. And if that ball was thrown correctly, it would have been picked off. Yeah. Because there was, was two Glacier Peak guys right there. So here we go, Scott, fourth and 14. They're going to attempt another field goal. So <laughs> where's Kainoa Wong and Justin Guffey? Kainoa again setting the table nicely on the right side. You get Cho holding. See where they line Guffy up at, because he's usually, oh, Kainoa's switching sides. So now here comes Austin Hines coming through. 31 yarder. And he got it again! He got it for the second wow. time! Wow! Kainoa Wong putting on a blocking clinic. Man, and I knew something with some trickery was that they switched him to the other side. Then they kind of moved Austin Hines, so they had a little bit of trickery up their sleeves, and they just don't have an answer for that. It was a nice snap, a decent hold. But Kainoa was in there quick, and he's Cat just quick. a slippery guy to try to contain. Oh, wow. And the defense and special teams coming up big tonight. Glacier Peak now in business. Berg in motion. Branson's going to keep it a great tackle. Got in there. Testerman again with big number 75 for Shorewood. Chris Lee, the six foot senior. And going back to that uh, play by uh, Kainoa Wong, he was in there so early it hit him right in the belly. It, it did. It, it was, yeah, he didn't even have to dive for no. it. Just kind of right in his belly. <laughs> he hugged the ball. Yeah. Second and 10, 32 seconds left in the third. Berg in motion. Branson pitches it to Berg on the left side. Has to negotiate Ooh. one, but can't get away from Angelo Pere. And Nolan Dale having some words afterwards with that number big 75 Lee for Shorewood. Glacier Peak not quite opening up the holes like they normally do, and that's gonna do it for the third quarter, Scott. So 11 nothing Glacier Peak, but still Shorewood's in the game without a doubt. Well, almost a baseball score here from Shoreline Stadium. We'll see what fourth quarter has in store. We'll be right back with that and much more you're watching Glacier Peak Football on the Snohomish Times Sports Network.
Back start of the fourth quarter, 12 minutes. Branson Corwin fakes it. Now he's flushed out of the pocket. Right has to get rid of it. Does, and it's caught over the middle by Pinka. Not quite enough for the first. I think he's going to be about a yard short. A mark him at the, what do they got, 26 They're going to go line. for it. Fourth they're going to go for it. Fourth and They're saying fourth and four? What in the world? I thought he was had it with, I thought he was about a yard short. Not a favorable spot. Jeez, they're going for it on their own 26-yard line. Nick Allen on the far side. You have McFadden on the near side along with Leon Elliott in the slot. Pink in the backfield. Again, Glacier Peak here fighting for every yard. Berg in motion. Good snap. Branson over the middle, overthrows, trying to go to McFadden. McFadden either stopped on it or that was a miscommunication. And they're going to turn it over on downs on their own 26-yard line. Now, the, I guess the good thing for Glacier Peak is Shorewood's been down here all night long and not been able to convert anything for the most part. You know, well, they're really, they haven't for all parts. Yeah, just, but they <laughs> are taunting the bear, are they, they not? They are. At some point, they're going to get the ball across the goal line. You <laughs> so, give them this many opportunities. First and 10 now at the Grizzly 26-yard line. Just the start of the fourth quarter. Again, big pressure. He gets it off. Incomplete. Trying to go for Testerman one more time. Yeah, and, uh, number 18 there's petitioning for a flag, but uh, he just the quarterback just didn't have any time, anything to do. He had, like, about one second to get rid of that. I want to thank Snohomish Bakery for their always great friendship, sponsorship, everything. Downtown Snohomish, the Snohomish Bakery, great place to hang out, get some incredible baked goods. They cater, they'll deliver. They do everything downtown Snohomish, Snohomish Bakery. Second and 10 at the 26. Aaron Okamura, the sophomore, a very young Thunderbird team. Now he's going deep. The sideline, he'll overthrow that one again. Trying to go to Boyston Vordal, but. And the reason he overthrew that is because he had to get rid of it like instantly because there was <laughs> yeah. pressure coming on him. Didn't quite have time to uh, set up and make the right pass. It was getting hot in a hurry for young Aaron Okamura as they have brought a lot of pressure this second half, Tim. Angelus Perry in the back uh, field, third and 10. Again, still at the 26th, got turned over. McCoy tries to lose Perry block. There it is. Intercepted. There and it here is. goes the thief to the 50. You One guy to beat, 40, 30, 10. Touchdown, Glacier Peak. We talked about it all night. The thief. Oh, no. Uh-oh, I think that might be coming back. A big block. And Number 51 for Shorewood down on the ground. And it looks like a leg injury there. You know it's what? Andrew I, Blair. I got to tell you, this is, I think this is going to go against Glacier Peak, and they've just got to they've got it to get it together with these penalties. So this is going to cost them seven points on this penalty here. And it looks like somebody just drilled. You know, the, by the way it looks, you know, when you have these interceptions, there's a lot of dirty plays on an interception. You know, people just go out and stick people when there's an interception, and it looks like that's what happened here. See what uh, see what they're saying, see what the coaches are saying down there. Another injured, and I think that's 51. Andrew Blair, the freshman that Coach uh, Rob Peschel said is one of the most promising young offensive linemen that they have. Again, 5'10", 215, this freshman playing varsity football, and... We talked about injuries. Let's check in with Ron Henthorne and see what's going on. He's right in the pack in the thick of things there on the sideline as we see uh, the referees conferring. Ron? Yeah, I didn't actually see uh, what was going on down there. A couple of players I was talking to said that they didn't have a number as to who made the, uh, made the block on him. So uh, let's we'll see if he gets up and hope he's all right. Big thank you, Ron Henthorne, our sideline 
the wedge reporter down there finding out big 51 walking off under his own power and there mark running this one back trey chambers you know that'll go in the books as a 10 yard penalty but it's really about a 60 yard penalty yeah you know easy actually probably more even yeah they well, were at the 26-yard line. Today. Yeah, they, there was a 76-yard run, but now it goes back to the, you know, 41-yard line. So, Glacier Peak takes it over with 11:25 left to go. Our Seattle Hill physical therapy score: Glacier Peak 11, Shorewood zero. Boy. The defense and special teams, Brady Southern in there, and the first time we get to see the Brunswick carry the ball with his first, and boy, the player number 50, Riley Teeters just didn't want to let him go. No, and he, he ends up getting about five yards on that. So Brady Southern, the junior in there, junior to junior, Matt Darling, oh. fumble. Hines going for it, still on the ground, and it ends up on a green jersey, and Shortward gets the ball, the second fumble tonight. It's recovered by number 13, Spencer Jacobs. And once again, the Thunderbirds are in business in deep in Glacier Peak territory. Well, so let's Jeff. break this down. So that penalty not only just cost them the seven points that you have to take off the board, then it costs them, and that penalty ends up costing them. Now they, then now they're on the 30-yard line of Glacier Peak, so they're almost in the red zone. So huge, the penalties tonight are just huge for against Glacier Peak. First and ten at Glacier Peak's 30-yard line. They were just here at the Glacier Peak 26. Angelo Pere makes a nifty move, cuts back up the middle, and a nice gain of six. Yeah, he's uh, that little that little guy's hard to tackle. He doesn't pick up a lot per carry, but he's got 11, 12 carries for 31 yards tonight for Angelo Pere, senior. He's making some good defensive plays on the other side of the ball too. Yes, he is. He's been tormenting. Second and four. Okamura fakes. Looks like a broken play. Oh, Slips out of two tacklers. Cuts to the edge. He's in for a Thunderbird touchdown. So not only do they, the penalty takes back the pick six. And they fumble. And it results finally in a Thunderbird score. Their first one tonight. And uh, so you can make the argument that penalty indirectly leads to a 14 point swing. Seven come off the board for Glacier Peak. They end up getting, then Shorewood ends up get, probably gonna get six or seven out of it. So huge penalties tonight. They have had issues trying to kick the ball. I, Two of them tonight blocked well, I by Kaino Wong. They're gonna probably go for, well, they're probably going no, they're for going, two. They're going for two. Yeah. That puts them down. They successfully get it. Then they're only down by a field goal. Big Harrison Jacobs in there with Testerman and Perry, but we're going to get a flag, or are they going to have a timeout? Timeout time out on the field. 10:05 left. Our Seattle Hill physical therapy score: Glacier Peak 11, Sherwood 6. Waiting for the two-point conversion. You're watching Glacier Peak football on the Snohomish Times Sports Network. We'll be back right after this.
Back here at Shoreline Stadium, fourth quarter action. The Thunderbirds trying to go for two. Okamura with a nice run, fakes the pitch. Now rolling right. Freightliner looking, tips the ball, but it's caught in the back of the end zone by number 11. That's Zane Hoppin we've been telling you about, the 6'4 basketball player. And well, he is, and that's a that was a big two point conversion. So that brings them to within three. How Shorewood is actually staying in this game, I do not understand. Glacier Peaks just making a lot of mental errors, and this game really should Glacier Peaks should have been should be blowing them out realistically. Boy, oh boy, boy, this game, you know, maybe Shorewood is taking over the Mount Lake Terrace typical night where it's just ugly, mistakes, weird things happening. We do have a full moon tonight. Maybe Shorewood is the new Mount Lake Terrace. Maybe they are. Homecoming night tonight. Oh, homecomings are always bad. They were, remember a couple years ago, they lost, Glacier Peak lost all their games on homecoming. <laughs> Somebody else's homecoming. I think we lost our own homecoming and like Mount Vernon's homecoming and Meadowdale's homecoming. The homecoming uh, curse. The curse, and they've got Jake Berg back on. Let's see who else they have. A couple different players. They got to look for an onside kick here, maybe. You think so? With 10 minutes left, well, we'll see, maybe. Berg, the deep man. It's a little pooch kick. It's well, caught easily, but now uh, they're saying he dropped the ball and Shorewood has it. Rory Rosenball out there pleading his case that the ball is down. Yeah, all the Shorewood players are saying that they got it. It looked like to me that Glacier Peak caught it initially. I don't know what happened and, afterwards. And that actually was an onside, a, an onside kick. What they do is they drill it right at the guy on the front line and try to get him to touch it. But now Glacier Peak saying they've come down with it. Well, we got Dakota Zelmer. Now we're gonna have to go uh, again. These referees conferring. You've got a shoreward player right in the middle of it. Check in with Ron Henthorne, our sideline reporter. Do you see anything, Ronnie? No, it was on, all blocked out down here for me. So the Glacier Peak players say they got it. So we're waiting for the ref to make the call here. And you can see him as clear as I can. About ready to make it. And they are saying it is Glacier Peak ball. The fans, the homecoming crowd does not like it. Man, I got to tell you, that was a great kick. He kicked it. You kick what you do is you kick it as hard as you can right at one of the Glacier Peak players, and hopefully something will happen. And it did, and it kind of looked like it kind of looked like Shorewood came down with it from here. But I don't know. I Glacier. will never question the eyes of Tim Boyle. <laughs> He's got double laser work. Pinka. Works his way, a nice gain of seven up the middle to the 47 yard line. I'll leave him second and two or three. Second and two. Now Glacier Peak needs to come up with some type of score here because uh, if they can get a field goal or something, they'll put it, uh, they'll make it so they have to get a touchdown. Branson backhands it again for Pinka. Pinka, Glacier Peak first down. He crosses the mid stripe into Shorewood territory. First and 10 now at the Shorewood 48. A bizarre game here tonight. And I'll tell you what, they're gonna have their hands full next week with Meadowdale if they're playing like this against Shorewood. 9.21 left in this football game here tonight. Stay tuned for the Kathy Salvadolina Windermere Real Estate Broker post game show. Branson Corwin again, a steady die to pick. He breaks a tackle, he's down to the 30. Perry chops him down with a great tackle at the 21. But Josh Pinka, Man. his largest run of the night. A great run and a great tackle by Perry. Man, he does not play like he's – kind of plays a little bit like Kainoa Wong, plays a lot bigger than he is. But he's a phys – that little – he's a physical kid. First and 10 at the Thunderbird 21-yard line. Branson again, Pinka. Pinko wants more, he gets to the 12, and that's where he stopped. Nice sportsmanship helped up there by 
Shorewood players. Going to be interesting call on player of the game tonight. I'm yeah, not sure. Yeah, you thinking here? The well, Jets obviously, Kainoa Wong's up there oh. because he's got those two big blocks. Second and two. Branson gives it back to Pinka. Boy, they're riding the Pinka train, and yeah. I think he made it. He gets to the eight or the nine. I think he did get it. So first and goal again, having difficulties in the first half, punching it in. Finally scored on a Branson Corwin run in the third quarter. Branson, tough snap, he keeps it again. Branson slips by the first guy, he'll get to the four. Boy, Branson took a I hit there at the hurt. end and he's still right. down. Ooh, he did take a wicked hit. Looked like he got hit pretty much below the waist, like maybe at the knee or something. He looks like he's in agony. Might have hopefully just got the wind knocked out of him. Looked like he literally got a, a gut punch there. Yeah. Ron saying it's his knee. It looked kind of like it might be his knee from here. But should we, let's go down to Ron and see what he saw. Uh, he got hit pretty hard, and he's actually pointing to his left. Not sure whether it's bruised or where he is with that, but they're taking a quick look at him right now. We'll let you know when he gets up in a minute. Say that again, Ron, his left what? I think he's at his left knee. His left knee, okay. 8.06 left in the fourth quarter. Again, a night of penalties and injuries, Tim Boyle. Well, just like it is every time we come here, there's injuries. <laughs> Tonight's broadcast brought to you by... A Wesco Septic, A Wesco Septic, our pregame sponsor, Lou Bunt, saw yeah. Lou down there. Looks like he's nursing some type of knee or leg injury. Boy, I tell you, you were just talking about Angelos Perez, who's listed at 5'7 and 165. Branson Corwin, 5'8, 140, but tough, tough kid. We'll get Ron to check on him in a moment, and we'll see how he does. Meanwhile, Brady Southern, the junior, second and goal. A three-point lead right now. Hines in motion. Pitches it to Hines. Hines, it's on the ground. Now the ball is fumbled. Still on the ground, and Shorewood picks it up, and they'll get it back on the 12-yard line. So Brady Southern with a slick Pitch out to Hines, couldn't handle it. Hands Hines had no way to get that. I think Brady's last play he was in on, they fumbled the ball too. So I think that's two fumbles in a row for Brady. Now he didn't actually fumble that, but he pitched it to him. And so, uh, boy, I'll tell you what, nothing seemed to be going Glacier Peaks way tonight. Lost opportunities tonight here at Shoreline Stadium. Unbelievable. Scott Oshman with Tim Boyle here, live Shoreline Stadium, 7.45 left. Shorewood now with another turnover. Jensen now, Okamura can't get away, and he's taken down by Holloman, Fafita, and Elvick. And they're going to give him a generous spot on there. It looks like the umpire's calling it for about that the four-yard <laughs> line. Looked like he was back at about the two. Thought they had him pinned by the line there, but they always in high school football, you and I talk about it every week, interesting spots. Watch now on the near side, number 11, Zane Hoppin. Second and 18. Uh, wow. That is the marker, it gets Perry up the middle, nowhere to go, very. He might have got back to the line of scrimmage, but uh... Good push there by the defensive line. Fafita and Elvig having a nice game tonight up front. Six minutes, 48 seconds left. Shorewood needs at least a field goal to stay alive here. Third and 17. Hines matched up on the near side with Hop in there. Big receiver at 6'4". Perry in the backfield. Okamura goes quick to Hoppin. He catches it at the 15 to the 20. Hoppin still on his hopping. 
ways, and he makes it for a huge third and 17, a Thunderbird first down, and they'll have it at the 36-yard line. Yeah, third and 17, and he picks up about 30 or so. Number 11, senior 6'4", Zane Hoppen, again, one of their key matchups or players on the hardwoods. Boy, what a big play. Ron's got an update on uh, Corwin, so we'll go to him in just a minute here. First and 10 now at their own 38. Okamura going left. Now he tucks it and runs. Spins out of the tackle to the 45. Gets up to the mid-stripe, the 50-yard line. Looks like he went out of bounds at the 45. Oh, so he's going to be a little short of the first down. Let's go to Ron and see what the update is. Stop. Just checking with uh, Branson Carwin here. Uh, he's uh, got a big scratch on his left knee. He got up and walked around, said it feels great. No looseness. He's ready to go back in the game. He's cleared. Back to you. Okay, thanks, Ron. Great updates every single Friday night for our sideline reporter, Ron Hanthorne. Second and three for the Thunderbirds. Big first down, swing it out. It's caught, and he rumbles up, and he's good tackled by Ian Black but it'll be an Andrew Garrison first down. Man, Glacier Peak's in a little bit of trouble here with five minutes and 46 seconds. Shorwick could go down and win the ball game here. Second, or excuse me, first and 10 now, new set of downs for Aaron Okamura. And who would have thought that at five minutes left in the game, Shorewood would be knocking on the door to go ahead. Starting to get some steam in the second half, 28 carries 53 total on the ground for the Thunderbirds. Okamura back, now he slings it and it's caught again by Hoppen. Yeah, and Austin Hines at the last second gave him an extra four or five yards of cushion. He was playing man, on, man to man right up front and changed his mind and uh, that's what let, let him get the Little four yards there. Our Seattle Hill Sport and Spine Physical Therapy score five, ten left to go in this football game. Glacier Peak 11, Thunderbirds 8, but they are driving now on the Glacier Peak 47 yard line. Boy, tight, exciting game here from Shoreline Stadium. Aaron Okamura. Now. It's time going to out. Be a time out. Time out, Shorewood. Again, 447 left. Don't go away. We will be right back. You're watching Glacier Peak Football on the Snohomish Times Sports Network. Tim Boyle, STSPN.com. Glad you're with us, getting some great posts on our Facebook page. Boy, nervous time for Grizzly fans. Second and five, the Grizzly 47. Okamura back to pass, getting chased, and he's finally taken down, but he gets oh. rid of it, it's intercepted. It's Brendan Jensen with his second huge pick of the night. If there's no flags, he had a huge one in the second half in the third quarter against Jackson. Oh, wow. Brendan Jensen. And I'll tell you what, that was a big mistake by the quarterback there. He was getting sacked, and he wanted to get rid of it, and he should have just held on to it or threw it out of bounds. A big night for turnovers, costly penalties. None bigger than the sophomore Aaron Okamura. He had pressure, as Tim was saying. Oh, what a play by Brendan Jensen. Corwin hands it off to Pinka, has a seam, likes what he sees, balls down to the 
team. Josh Pinka loves the left side, and he had plenty on that run. Man, and Josh Pinka's making a case for player of the game right now. Who we'll do you have think to look. right now? I mean, Brandon I think Jensen, that's a huge pick that, right there. That was huge, and Kainoa's having a big game, and uh, Ky uh, Pinka's having a big game, so it's tight right now. God, it's tight. Well, I tell you, the game's Pink intense. Is, Pink is coming out with a little bit of an injury right now, though. So oh, I in see comes, him goes yeah, down. in comes Darling. I hope that's just like a little cramp. Yeah, it might be a cramp. I'm sure Ron Henthorne's all over it. First and ten, though, at the 17, the Brunswick whistles and flags will delay this one. Probably going to be a false start or a legal procedure there. Definitely going against Glacier Peak. Jake Berg looks like he's frustrated. Here comes the ref to give us the call here. Always. False start, Glacier Peak. Push him back. First and 15, that will make it. Penalties all Glacier Peak tonight. That front line, Pincus made him pay. Nick Hensley tried to get his touchdowns in the first half. He had a running back there at the two. Couldn't get in. Branson Corwin yeah, took a big hit. He's back. Darling up the middle. The Brunswick crosses the 20. Not much there. I guess the only good thing about that, it's going to chew a little clock. I mean, ideally, Glacier Peak could chew a bunch of clock in here and either score. If they could get a touchdown, that would seal it. They could chew about two more minutes and get a touchdown. That pretty much puts the game out of reach for them. Watch out. Field goal, you know, it's tough because then they can, Shorewood can come down and uh, get a touchdown and win the game. Watch out on the far side of the field, Justin the Hitman Guffey and a receiver. Branson Corwin, Leon Elliott in motion. He hands it to the Brunswick. The Brunswick up the middle. He'll get to the 16. A nice tackle. By number 50, Riley Teeters. Glacier Peak seemed to just want to keep it on the ground. Clock going down to 3.06. They've used one timeout so far this half. Third and 13. Trying to get to the seven yard line for a first down. As the Shorewood players look into their crowd, as we look down, it was didn't look too full, but small but mighty student section trying to get things jacked up here at homecoming. Oh, man. Another That's going to be another penalty against Glacier. Oh, it's a timeout, Glacier Peak. Okay. All right. Well, do not go anywhere. 2.34. We've got so much more coming with the Kathy Salvadolino player of the game. There's a tight three-way race, I feel like, Tim Boyle. I agree. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back right after this. You're watching Glacier Peak Football only on the Snohomish Times Sports Network. See Josh Pinka being worked on. We'll get an update from Ron Henthorne after this play. Third and 10, Branson Corwin at the 17 yard line. Elliott in motion going over the middle. It's caught, touchdown Glacier Peak. 29, the senior Jake Berg. That was a great play and that pass was right on the money. Absolutely perfect pass by Corwin. And Corwin obviously, uh, not hurt too bad, comes back in, throws a touchdown. Got to like that. I tell you, he is small but mighty. Did yeah, and that's huge uh, hits at Jackson game, and boy, he came back out of there and, and threw a bullet. And that pretty much sealed the deal right there because now they gotta, they're going to have to get a touchdown and a field goal to get back in this game. Austin Hines the hold. The pennant's up, and it's blocked. Uh-oh. Whitaker. 
But you cannot... can't run. You can't run him back in high school. That's right. Isaac Whitaker was on his way to Partyville. He, he that would have been uh, well in the pros. That's a two. That could or could be a two point. Can be a two points the other way. Oh, in the pros. Yeah, or is that college that has two uh, points might the other be, way? I think college and pros. I think he can. Can he take that back? It wouldn't be a touchdown because it's on the extra point. If it's on a field goal, you can do it for a touchdown, but not on an extra point. The official rule book of STSPN is the brain of Tim Boyle. It's all unofficial, though. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's go and down I'm to Ron Enthorne and get an update on Josh Pinka. Okay, Josh Pink is up walking on two feet now and uh, looking to get his uh, shoes tied up nice and tight. He says he's ready to go back in, so he's just waiting there for his chance. Back to you guys. 20, 21 carries. Thank you, Ron. 21 carries, 151 yards, and a touchdown for senior Josh Pinka. He doesn't want to come off the field. No, not, not with the game he's having. That's the first. Is that the first extra point that's been blocked this year for I, GP? I think so. In fact, I was looking. Uh, you'll have to check me on this, but uh, maybe somebody out there on STSPN Facebook can check me. I believe that young Spencer Pettit is 100% on PATs this not, year. Not now. Well, up not. until that yeah, point. Yeah, I think you're right. I, I, abs I absolutely think you're right. I don't think there's been any mishaps. Uh-oh, the ball just fell off the tee there. You've got to go check that. The clock is at 2 minutes and 31 seconds. Your Seattle Hill physical therapy score. Glacier Peak 17, Shoreward 8. See if Spencer, the weapon, can kick this one into the blue end zone. Yes, he does. That one is easily way down there. And five yards deep on that one. Riccio Campbell, no chance to take that one back. So Spencer's having a big night kicking the ball, not pretty much getting them five, six yards deep. Always want to thank our friends at Mongo's. Eat at Mongo's.com, the presenting sponsor for the Coach Rose Show. You can see that on STSPN.com if you missed our pregame show. They have got incredible grub all the time head on down on highway 9 in clearview mongos checking them out at eat at mongos.com first and 10 from their own 20. young aaron okamura peterson coming through the shoot eludes him he'll pass it. it's incomplete young aaron okamura he's had a tremendous night tonight he made one major mistake on that last yeah, well series. that that mistake may have cost him the ball game too because they were actually driving to go ahead in this game and uh, makes that little mishap, throws the interception, and that pretty much sealed the deal because now, of course, they need a touchdown and a field goal. Boy, Aaron, uh, 11 for 25, 81 yards, long 33, but that big interception, that last series. Second and 10, Okamura goes over it. Incomplete. In and out of the hands again. Trey Chambers on the coverage. That was uh, actually good coverage on Trey. He was he was about to catch the ball, and Trey kind of hit him right at the perfect time there. Boy, how many touchdowns has Trey Chambers been uh, denied? Probably about three this year. Total penalties tonight. Again, this in from our great statistician, who's unfortunately out of the booth in the cold. Nine penalties for 163 yards for Glacier Peak. Yeah, that's that's just ridiculous on those penalties. Third and 10 for Okamura. Now getting chased by Fafita, lets it go. That one's not gonna get to hop in, hop in that time. I don't know if that ball was tipped or uh, he definitely had to get rid of it quick. Let's give some loving to Big Mo Fafita, Josh Elvig, Drew Liner, Hensley. Ian Black, Peterson, the gang, the defensive front and outside linebackers and middle linebackers, they have They've had a great game tonight, no doubt about it. They've uh, got a lot of push there, putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback, at least, you know, not necessarily with sacks, but they've made him get rid of a lot of them, or a lot of hurry-ups. We'll have scores and more here. 218 left, fourth down, 10 to go. More pressure for Okamura, and he goes down, and it's McCoy and Elvig. 
Yeah, that's a turnover on downs there. That's actually going to give Glacier Peak the ball at about the what? Eight yard line, 10. Oh, they're spotting it at the 10. Well, that's those funny spots they have in high school again because it looked like he was back at about. Oh, they're now the 11. Come on. I don't even know where they came up with that's that. That's like three yards back from where he was tackled. Elvig having a big night tonight, and then you get to see the backup quarterback, the sophomore, Andrew McCoy, getting a start the Jackson game at linebacker, and he has held that spot. Branson McCoy again, Pinka. Pinka driving across the five to the three, leading the charge for the Kathy Salvadolina player of the game right now in Tim Boyle's eyes. Yeah, and he's actually playing a little injured too. So that gets him down to what about the three yard line. So Bang. it's actually, it's actually, they can actually pick up a first down. So it's second and two on the three. Cascade 37, Jackson nothing, and that is a final. That's crazy, that score. Branson Corwin, second and goal to two. Nobody but Pinka in the backfield. Now he's watching the clock come down to 1.30 left. Now he sits in his crouch, gets it. And he's going to go down for a oh, loss. And throw there's another. Flag. That's Angelo Perry. Finally, Glacier Peak gets gets a break but oh and another one another one way back in the end zone that might even be a different penalty so for sure there's a late hit on the quarterback there might be some extracurricular in the end zone too so interest I, I know for sure one's a late hit on the quarterback Teeters came in and sacked Corwin now they're looking Drew Liners looking to the sideline let's go down and check in with Ron Henthorne did you see something we didn't uh, I didn't see what was going on in the end zone down there, but the uh, uh, their signaling it was against uh, Sh uh, Shorewood, and you obviously saw the roughing the passer uh, right there. So we'll see what the I'm, head ref shows up with here. Thank you, Ron. I'm hoping those aren't offsetting like something happened in the end zone too, because then it'll just be it'll be down over basically. But it looks like they're going to mark it off. And the referees. Or, having a uh, lecture there with Neil Drewliner, the Freightliner, getting some... See, I think Drewliner might have been in on something, too. So let's see what they're going to... Here we go. Head ref coming over. Roughing the passer. Roughing the passer on Shorewood, but... Yep, that's is that all. it? Is that it? That's is that it. all? That's it. 121 left. They're marking it off half the distance to the goal. But now, no, oh. there's a personal foul or oh, Glacier Peak. There is Glacier Peak. You got to quit with those personal fouls. And it really, that's more costly for Glacier Peak because it's only half the distance on for Glacier Peak. But then on the other penalty coming back, you get the full 15. They're going to break the record uh, for this season on penalties. Nine penalties were 163 before that one. So that's another 15 to that. So now it's third, and eight, but it should be down over, though. It should They're be. saying, yeah, they have to go. Pinka gets the carries, knocked down a great tackle coming in, Harrison Jacobs. And now they stop the clock with one minute and 10 seconds, and it's a timeout, Shorewood. Let's catch you up on some other West Coast scores. Edmonds Woodway 35, Linwood 7, that's a final. Darrington 35, Ashland Island 15, a final. Told you earlier, if you missed it, Cascade 37, Jackson 0. I'm, I'm shocked that Jackson couldn't get some points on the board because they got a high-powered offense, and... Uh, just to kind of bring you back to the game for a second, I think they're going to go with a Spencer Pettit field goal here. It's going to be about, what, 19, probably about 36 yards, if my math is correct. Spencer credited for the only points of the first half, 3-0 and a 34-yard field goal from the weapon. More scores in. Kings 55, Granite Falls 7, Kamiak 48, Mariner 13. And trying to get Lakewood 21, Cedar Crest 0, trying to get that Meadowdale Eastlake score. That I am interested in that one. 
Well, here we go, Scott. So it looks like they're going to go for a field goal here on fourth and 18. Well, if you missed the first half, I don't know, we mentioned, you know, Spencer Pettit, the weapon, he's had a couple, uh, he had a blocked PAT earlier. He had some issues last week against Bothell. A guy got in and tipped one, but uh, was worried about his leg. He's been going to do some yoga. Here's the hold. Hines down. It's up. And it is more than good. It's right down the kisser. And again, how far back did that go? Easily could have been good. That was a 36 yarder. Easily would have been good for fifth from 50. Easily. Spencer Pettit wants the Kathy Salvadolina STSPN <laughs> player of the game shirt. Well, he's going to have to kick more than a 36 yarder <laughs> for that. Look for the Everett Herald uh, doing a story on Spencer Pettit. We're gonna we're gonna go with uh, tonight. We're going with Josh Pinka for the uh, player of the game, Scott. Ooh, the Kathy Salvadolino win the real up, estate. He ended up with what 155 yards, 23 carries, a TD, 36 yards for his long, averaging about six point something yards per carry. So great night for the senior, playing hurt a little bit. Had a little uh, nick on the wheel, came back out. Great night for the senior, Josh Pinka. Couldn't miss the first few games, an uh, uh, off-season injury, a hamstring that was bugging him. And our Seattle Hills Sport and Spine Physical Therapy score, Glacier Peak now 20 and Shorewood 8. But I tell you, if you didn't, if you weren't at this game and you were crazy and not watching STSPN.com, you wouldn't know this game went like it did seeing just the score as Spencer kicks it off deep and that'll go into the blue turf. Good job by Pettit to get it out of the end zone, but you're right, this is kind of a, I don't even know how to describe this game. I mean, Glacier <laughs> Peak had blown opportunities. And you know, it is kind of, that was kind of fog. Look up at the lights, yeah, you know, now, we kind yeah. of, there was some fog, like a marine layer forming. It's cold out there. It's like that car that you, you, you have it running, it's running really nice, but then you're going along and it just, drops out it just kind of peters out and then you just have to get out get out start to you know get it going again and then it goes and then it just stops yeah that's been the story tonight for glacier peak then at four left to go here at shoreline stadium first and ten for the 20. okamura lets uh -oh. this one go nobody was there well, that should be you could call that grounding where there was <laughs> a receiver within 15 yards of that ball andrew garrison was in the same area code but Barely. He was I think flying somebody, down the coach field. down on the sideline, is petitioning for a flag. And you can; those usually come in late. A lot of times, those grounding flags, they'll kind of look around and confer, and they'll throw a flag like 30 seconds late on those. Austin Hines wishing he didn't pedal back as far because he had an easy pickings right yep. there. Second and ten from their own 20. Now, clock down to a minute. Okamura, traffic, Fafita. And he won't be getting away from this one. Again, Mo Fafita, Guffey, and the gang. The Grizzlies putting on a lot of heat here in the second half. And not only that, the clock keeps running, so that's their enemy. They're, they may have time for one more play. I don't think they're going to, you know, they know they can't win with 37, 30 seconds left, so probably content to just run one more play and call it good. Give Rob Peschel, the head coach here at, Shorewood Thunderbirds, a lot of credit. Boy, they really made it interesting and tough in the first half and all the way actually through till the fourth quarter. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't know that they could have played a lot. I don't know if they could have done it any different, you know. Riccio Campbell with the carry on the left side, and he will not make it to the first down as the clock is going to wind down. Stay tuned. Don't go away here. We'll have Ron Henthorne. With our Sal Kathy Salvadolina player of the game, Josh Pinka, the senior, and maybe words from head coach Rory Rosenbaugh as we Glacier Peak fans get away 20 to 8 here at Shoreline Stadium. Boy, we had a huge delay. 10 o'clock on the West Coast. Wow, apologize to our East Coast viewers. It's Saturday over there. <laughs> it is. We're just... I've been on the East Coast all week, too. It feels like it's Saturday for me. 
tough travels this week in between games. Next week on STSPN, nowhere else. You can see it live. Glacier Peak welcomes the Mavericks from Meadowdale and brand new head coach Mike Don. Yeah, and if I had to base it on tonight's play, I'd say Glacier Peak's going to have their hands full next week, but hopefully they'll get it together. We'll have to at check our stats here, but I think Glacier Peak was close, closing in on like 200 yards and penalties. Easily. And yeah. you know, the first year we Let's did see, this, here two we years go. Ago, 10 penalties, 170. Wow. Thank you for our statistician extraordinaire. Working in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks to John McLean. 10 penalties. Man. Boy, and Glacier Peak players heading straight they just to the took, locker. Yeah, they just went straight to the locker. See so. if Ron Henthorne can get Josh Pickett. Oh, he's there's got Josh. The yep, there's Josh going over. I don't okay. know if we'll get it. Let's go down. Our Kathy Salvadolina, player of the game, senior Josh Pinka. Here's Ron Anthorn. I'm down here with Josh Pinka. Man, all the kids went in the locker room, Josh, but uh, congratulations. You're our player of the game tonight. Thank you. I appreciate it. You had a little injury there toward the end of the game, but you kind of shook it off. Just a cramp, was it? Yes, sir. Uh, just the game being delayed kind of got to me, and I didn't keep myself warm enough, so I need to do a better job in doing that, especially down towards the road at the end of the season. Well, it didn't affect your performance in the game. You got back in there and did some good things again. So I want to congratulate you and present you with this Kathy Salvadolina Player of the Game T-shirt. Kind of rip it out there and hold it up so the fans can see it for me. <laughs> Ron, he had 21 carries for 150, or 22 carries, 153 yards, and a touchdown. You had 22 carries and 156 yards, I think, so they're telling me. Well done. How's your picture? All right, thank you. Yep. We'll see you next week against Meadowdale. Hope you thank have a big you, game then, too. Awesome. All right, back to you guys. Uh, see, I don't know where Coach Rowe went, but if I can find him, I'll give you a buzz. Oh, thanks, Ron. Ron Henthorne doing a great job. I Josh Pinka coming over to get some loving. I don't think deserves. we're going to get Coach Rowe. I think they all took off, so. All right. Well, it's a final here from Shoreline Stadium, Glacier Peak. Uh, boy, an interesting, odd experience here all around uh, hope again our best thoughts to the injured cheerleader at halftime for shoreline 20 to 8 is the final here glacier peak winning over the shorewood thunderbirds our entire stspn crew ron henthorne our ex executive producer todd elvig five tool player leslie mccain mclean running the board shannon cuneo Brave in the cold out here. Another phenomenal night on camera. Eagle Eye, Chris Cuneo, John McClain, and for my good friend Tim Boyle. I'll see you next week. This is Scott Oshman saying so long from Shoreline Stadium. Good night, everybody.